Welcome to section 1.3, dilation and translation of function graphs. When we start with a basic graph, but we want to model a specific behavior, we need to manipulate that graph, maybe stretch or shrink it or shift it away from its original location on the graphing plane. Dilation means to stretch or shrink, and translation means to shift left, right, up, or down. To accomplish these two effects, we can use two basic algebraic operations, multiplication and addition. For each of those operations, we can apply them in two different ways. For instance, if we start with a basic function y equals f of x, we could multiply the whole function by a constant, which would look like this, y equals a times f of x, or we could multiply each x value in the equation by a constant which we would represent by this, y equals f times f of b of x. For addition, we can apply the same principles. We could add a constant to the whole function, y equals f of x plus c, or we could add a constant to each x value before we perform the rest of the operations in the function, y equals f of x plus d. Let's see how each of these operations affects our original function. Let's start with a basic graph. I chose y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared, which, as you can see, produces a semicircle with a radius of 1. So let's get that into our calculators. y, we go to the y equals screen, square root 1 minus x squared. And enter. Now my window, I, cho I chose a zoom decimal. Zoom 4. And that gives me a pretty good representation of this semicircle. Alright, so now let's start manipulating our image. Let's start by multiplying the whole equation by a constant. I chose 3. So if we were going to do that, our graph would look like this, y equals 3 times the square root of 1 minus x squared. So basically we have to type the whole equation in all over again. Or no, we don't. Our calculators recognize function notation. And here's how we would do that. We'll go back into y equals. Now I have my original function in the line y1. So y1 represents this function. So I'm going to go down to y2, and what I want to tell input into y2 is 3 times the expression I have in y1. So I'll hit the 3, and then I'm going to go to vars, ask for the y vars, the y variables. We're working with functions, so I'll choose number 1, and there's y1 in our list of choices. So now in y2, I'm saying multiply 3 by the function in y1. And if I hit enter and take a look at the graph, there's my original graph and there's my dilated graph. You can see that our new graph for every y value is now 3 times the size or value in our original function. And here's what happens. Here's what it looks like on our calculator. Now, let's see what happens if we choose to multiply each x variable in the function and not the whole function by a constant. I'm going to multiply by the, by the value 1 fifth. So in my calculator, what I would enter is 1 minus the quantity 1 fifth x squared. Notice how the 1 fifth only applies to the x and not to any other part of the function. Using calculator notation, we can change our function here. We're going to get rid of the 3, and then we're going to use the f of x notation. So y1 of 1 fifth times x. So just like f of 1 fifth x, this is y1 of 1 fifth x. It's not multiplication, but it's function notation. And if we look at our graph, we can hit enter, go to our graph, 
There's our original function. Huh. I don't know about you, but that's not what I was expecting. I would figure if you multiplied x by one-fifth, your graph would be one-fifth as wide. But it's not. It's actually five times as wide. Why don't you pause for a moment and see if you can justify to yourself why this effect is occurring. We'll discuss it in class. Okay, so as we saw, our graph goes from a radius of 1 to a radius of 5. Here's our calculator view. So when we're manipulating the x values in a function with multiplication, the effect is counterintuitive. A value smaller than 1 makes the graph wider, and I would assume a value larger than 1 would make the graph skinnier along the horizontal axis. You should try that out. Now let's look at what happens with addition. Let's take, or we could combine, the two operations and see what happens. We're going to multiply the whole equation by 3 and each x value by 1 fifth. So if we were going to write it out explicitly, it would look like this. 3 times the square root of 1 minus 1 fifth x squared. And in our calculator, we c it would look like this. There's our function. Now if I want to insert a 3 in front of this whole function, I don't have to delete everything and then type in the 3. I can do second delete, which is the insert, and then hit the 3, and there we go. Hit enter, and let's see the effect. There's our original function. Now our graph is dilated by a factor of 3 vertically and dilated by a factor of 5 horizontally we get something that looks like this. Okay, now let's see what happens with addition. First thing I'm going to do is add a constant to the whole function. In this case, I chose 2. So y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared, our original function, plus 2. And in our calculator, y1 plus 2. So let's do that. Go back to y equals. We're going to get rid of the 3, and we're going to get rid of, we can actually get rid of all of this. We don't need the uh, parentheses and the x if we're just adding 2 to the whole function. So y1 plus 2. Enter. Let's look at the graph. There's our original. Okay, so our entire graph was shifted upward by two units. The maximum was at 1, now it's at 3. Our minimum was at 0, and now it's at 2. So by adding 2 to the whole function, we created a horizontal translation of two units. So let's see what happens with adding a constant to each x variable in the function. Okay. I thought for to change it up a little bit, we'd try subtraction instead. So y equals f of x minus 4, which would look like the square root of 1 minus the quantity x minus 4 squared. Let's go back in. Let's get rid of that plus 2. Okay, and now we need the parentheses x minus what do you think is going to happen when we do this? Hmm. If it were me, I would think, oh, it will shift four units to the left because we're subtracting, and to the left is usually negative. Let's look at the graph. There's the original. Wait a second. It actually shifted four units to the right when we subtracted. Pause for a moment and see if you can justify to yourself why that shift occurs to the right when we subtract. Okay, so we saw that the image when we subtract shifted from the origin to the right. There's our calculator image. And if we combine the two operations, 
subtract from the x and add 2 to the function itself, or the y value. Let's go back. We can do that easily enough. We'll go down to y2. Plus 2. Enter. And graph. the original, and there's our new image. It's shifted four units to the right and two units vertically. So a, f a horizontal shift of four units and a vertical shift of two units. All right, so let's summarize what we've learned. When we multiply the whole function by a constant, we see a vertical dilation by a factor of the constant in this case, a. When we multiply each x value by a constant, we see a horizontal dilation by a factor of 1 over b, the reciprocal of the constant, the counterintuitive effect. When we add a constant to the whole function, we see a vertical translation by that constant, by c units. So if we subtracted, we'd see a vertical translation by negative c units. If we add a constant to each x value, then we see a horizontal translation by the negative of that constant, negative d units. If we put all of those into one equation, f of x equals a of f times the quantity b minus x minus c, all plus d, we can see that the constants that we apply to the function a and d affect the vertical image so that it'll stretch or shrink or shift up or down. Uh, and it, the constants we apply to the x value, the independent variable, affect the graph horizontally. And the constants we apply produce what I consider to be a counterintuitive effect. If b is larger than 1, the multiplication creates a dilation that shrinks the graph. If b is smaller than 1, a fraction, then we see a horizontal dilation that stretches or widens the graph. For our c value, when we subtract, we see a shift to the right, and when we add, we see a shift or a horizontal shift to the left. Multiplication creates a dilation effect, and addition creates a translation.